So on the bench today we have a QT, the Tektronix 2222 miniature scope, which kind of works and kind of doesn't work, but it's really a nice small scope with, um, it, well you could get LCD scopes today, but they don't have anywhere close to the nice mechanics and this is meant to go boop, right here. So I have a scope always ready on the bench that doesn't take much space. And uh, this one kind of turns on. So it takes almost any voltage. So I have it on the Sony power supply. And there you go. Hello and welcome back. Our very cute Tektronix 222 scope comes to us from 1988. It is an early digital scope, albeit at only 10 MHz per channel. There is a later model, the Tech 224, that will go up to 60 MHz. But both digitize at a relaxed pace of 10 Mega samples per second and on only 8 bits. So they compare with today's low-cost miniature LCD scopes but in my opinion, they are of much better quality. Mine is from the infamous unable to test eBay category, but it appeared mostly complete and in very good cosmetic condition. It was missing its power supply, which is no big deal since it will take almost any input from 12 to 28 volt DC or 16 to 20 volts AC, 15 watts max. An old 20 volt laptop power brick did the trick. It's also missing a knob. And it comes from Texas and some local appears to have stuck his belt buckle on the top. Oh well. And so far so good, it turns on and somewhat works, which was unexpected. Fire zone has a trace. Uh, the problem, so it's missing a button, that's fine. And... Ooh. Yeah, the problem is with the with the horizontal. It doesn't change correctly, and it's coupled with the position. So the horizontal speed is not moving with the knob. It's supposed to move. It's moving with the other knob. Uh, so maybe something mechanical. And over here it has all its probes, which is nice because those are uh, a weird impedance probe. So when you don't have them, it's hard to replace. Possible but difficult. And I think that slides away. Because it's the battery compartment. Yes, here we go. Here is the battery compartment. It, yeah, it's comp completely dead. Let me figure out how to get in it. Torx screws. Oh, that's a little. Ooh, they're very loose. Somebody was in there before me. It says you have to take those out. Aha, better. And It's the top panel cable. There, you go. there we have it. And voila! Ooh, that's an integrated part. That's going to be an issue. This little bushing is important, by the way. It goes between the shaft and the knob. Don't lose it. I need to discharge the tube. Okay. Those are push buttons. This one works, this one works, and this one doesn't work. I should be able to push it in and should click in. So that's for the 10x mag, but it does not. These multifunction knobs are modular. 
They were quite delicate to disassemble, but at least this is screwed together, not riveted. If I'm lucky, it might be repairable. So here's my switch assembly. Coming all apart, that's the switch at the back. And I think my problem is that this retaining ring moved. It should be way down. Okay, so that is... That is a pot. Okay, how can I take that out? That is the pot. That is the rotary. Oh, wait, there is a... Yeah, so here is here's the groove for the clip. So the, the clip had gone out of position. So here's this. That was my problem. Probably was going the whole works. Here's this. It is... And that's just mechanical detent. Okay, so I'm not sure why this is not working. Okay, I think I repaired it, so it was mostly the clip. There's uh, still, I'm still slightly worried whether my uh, selector will grab. I was lucky enough, I was able to find a way around it. Uh, we'll see. So yeah, it was the clip that had slipped probably when someone tried to pull out the knob. The inner shaft damaged the speed control rotary, but luckily the outer shaft is like a fork around it. I was able to splay it enough to engage in the damaged rotary commutator. So hopefully this will work again. Okay, I'll put it all back together because I think this was pretty much the only problem. So I'm hoping for the best. It's not that hard to take a part yes position moves doesn't change the speed setting speed works time stand work okay so that was it uh so channel two how it, does it work channel two ac channel two off so you go channel two on that is channel 2 and channel 1. One off. <laughs> I've managed to turn my two channels off. Oh, I see you go DC, AC, DC. Channel 2, DC. And position. Yeah. Channel 1, position. So it's all the. Tektronics have that as the interface is fantastic. They make it really perfect. Let's see if we can get any signal on it. One volt per division. Try our waveform generator. Okay, we we, we get. I uh, got nothing. Oh, here we go. Oh, because we're going too fast. There we go. Oh, here we go. And here we have it. Just an absolute delight of a small scope. Moments later. Okay, I did a little trip down the user manual and I have some uh, good news and some uh, medium news. So the good news is it's really a nice cute and usable scope. I have it on two different independent uh, waveform generators and uh, this is a full uh, digital scope so you can actually save the waveform. I do save and right now it's on channel 1 so we'll save it to 1. Okay and then we'll go back into uh, user mode and now if I change it to square for example here we go so we have the live square form and the save wave form. So that's pretty cool. And you have four uh, memories. It's pretty neat. Another thing that it does, let's go really, really, really slower. Yeah, so it automatically switches to a roll mode when it's really slow. 
How neat is that? Another thing it can do, it can do XY. Display XY. Boop. Alright, we have the super slow and super small Lisa Jou curve. Let's make it bigger there too. Here you go. I have some Lisa, Lisa Jou curve, so this is not fast enough. Let's go faster. Whoa. <laughs> oh, I see. You, you change the acquisition time by changing this. All right. I'm getting the hang of it. There we go. Display. Read out off. There we go. So it's sort of weird. It's obviously digital, but it has a very, very low sampling rate, which means it's really not very helpful in XY. Maybe if I manage to tune it for something better. There we go. <laughs> the sampling rate is very, very low. Anyhow, that was the good news. Now the not so good news. Let me get back into normal display. Display. Uh, and then we'll go channel one, tune, 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 channel two, tune, tune, tune. There you go. Oh, you saw when it, it went to. Look, it has really some weird aliasing modes here. Not sure what causes that, because if I change the sampling rate here, it's fine. No, I changed the speed. I did change the speed. That's what made it like that. Move that one up. That's where your trigger is. Um, line. Boop. XY. And it does this. That's to help you calibrate it. And it's not bad. It's not perfectly centered. And it's not perfectly at the right lateral dimension. So there's some adjustments I have to... Uh, do inside but it's very close and the one where it's not so nice is if I try to calibrate it it has the self calibration here and you can calibrate channel 1 channel 2 and for that you have to remove this the inputs and if I do channel 1 calibration here we go. And it's not happy because I have connected to the RS232 at the back and now it gives me all those errors. And by the way, this thing doesn't have uh, HPIB but it has RS232 at the back. And hallelujah, I have the manual, the interfacing guide, and I, I actually scanned it and, and, and put it up online. Um, so supposedly you can totally remote control the instrument and every button and every everything is accessible from a, a computer. You can tell it's, it's get going in the middle, it's trying several times to adjust the gain, which is correct. See, it says fail, didn't like it. Uh, and channel 2 will equally fail with the same kind of errors and you can look them up in the manual uh, I'll try to re-open re it up and adjust the, uh, the, the the sizes at least that seems easy okay it's back out in pieces and I have to adjust these pots I made it a little extender so I have access to the buttons here so I see aux functions a line x y here we go so this is just going to be uh, there you go icing on the cake that, uh, okay that's pretty good and horizontal gain is this one over there so there we go need to reduce that a little bit just a little higher okay so it's now absolutely perfect uh, but it's not going to help us with the cali calibration procedure. Uh, 
I'll just go look at the schematic, see if there's anything obvious, and if not, I might just let it live as is. Okay, so I found a little bit, but my errors, they are of type 8102 and 8108. 8102 is channel 1 mid position search error, although I could clearly see the trace was in the mid position. And 8108 is channel 1 gain search error, although I could see it was scaling the gain correctly. And I have the same errors on channel 2 to repair 81xx and 82xx failure replace the acquisition circuit board which seems to work fine i'm getting a signal it's plenty fine thank you very much and uh, so i it would be something that's common to both channel 1 and channel 2 uh, and has to do with the gain and position and maybe here that this thing says gain, this thing says position and but it's unclear how this whole thing works uh, yeah it might read from the amplifier and get it down here yeah so it might be somewhere in there hmm so i'm a bit puzzled because i saw nothing on the acquisition board itself that was common to channel one channel two and i see it correctly centering the thing so it's and it fills there although it does it correctly uh, and then yeah you say it's setting the gain so that's working too and why it cannot read it back I don't know um, so I'm sure we could read the code it's actually a 6800 uh, so 68 HC 11 so an 8 bit processor uh, that runs this thing so the, the, the code is completely reverse engineerable and then you could figure out that you know which error exactly it it spits out oh it passed huh while I was talking it passed all right so let's try calibration of channel 2 it's right on the line pass Okay, well, by not doing anything, it repaired itself, or just by doing the simple alignment, uh, it was enough to get it back into shape. Okay, so it looks like I have a fully functional Tektronix 222. Awesome. Later. I'm almost done with the tech uh, scope. Hi, for the battery. I chose to buy this already made kit. Uh, there are several ways to change the batteries. You can do it with uh, nickel metal hydride batteries, but you have to put a whole bunch of them. And it's actually uh, pretty hefty on the startup, so it might uh, shut off uh, intermittently. The best way to do it is to do it with lithium ion batteries, uh, which will give you way more capacity and uh, there was a charger that has been made by um, this guy kitsune denshi it's superbly engineered it has the uh, correct power supplies on both sides to bring the voltage down for charging and up uh, for operating the thing it has balancing and protection for each cell it's really really well engineered and he made it an open project and another guy made it commercial so you just buy it and add the batteries and it's just fantastic they provide the case with it and the cable and it fits just perfectly everything is great about this thing and I see it already came up so I already charged it and here I have my portable scope it charges automatically when you plug it into the power it tells you if it's doing good and charging just 
a wonderful kit. And then the last touch was to put another button replacement. So I uh, found a similar button and shaved it to size in the lathe. And it's actually not bad. Uh, but it's not exactly the same. So I'm going to see if I can mold another button that's going to be even closer. I'm going to try to mold a new button, a new knob. And I have never done anything like this. But I am well equipped and I have watched YouTube videos, so I should be a specialist, right? Step one, plug the hole with a little bit of clay. I think that will do. Right, I think that will do. Step two, attach it to the mold glued step uh, three the silicone imus dragon skin fx pro because this is what my daughter had laying around for her art projects and it says to stir the thing before you use it so stir the other one okay 30 grams of that, 30 grams of that, okay, so I don't know how much time I have, and turn the pump on. Is it boiling yet? Bubbles are coming up. Okay, I don't have much time, so I'm going to leave it like this. I think it made more bubbles than it actually removed. <laughs> okay, well, this is the first try. We'll see how that goes. Okay, it's been 40 minutes. should be cured. It is cured. It's, it's very soft. And guess what? I forgot to put the mold release on the button thing. All right, beginner's mistake. Let's see if it comes out. All right. Let's see if we can get it out despite not having put any mold release. Oh yeah, piece of cake. All right, let's mold it. I am going to use Instacart insta cast once again because that's what my daughter had around and it's by volume but I'll do it by weight should be good enough 13 okay in the vacuum okay this one's better it's much more liquidy okay hopes on her side That's all we need. Oh, it already set. It's getting white. Okay, the 12 minutes have elapsed. And... Okay, this is hard as a rock. Can we get it out? We sure can. Oh! It's a beauty. It appears almost perfect. And that's the little bushing from the original knob that you don't want to lose. 925, and I think this is this one. 915, yeah, okay. Perfect. All right, and this is, this is perfect. I just need to paint it and drill it for a screw. I didn't have the perfect tech khaki color for the button, so I tried to do a mix with a lighter khaki and some gray. We'll see what happens. So okay, I get a B minus on the color matching, but you get the idea. The button looks good. 
when I have more time I'll just remold another one and paint it better uh, but you get it so this is the button that you use to uh, auto auto center the um, auto trigger uh, on the top so it's pretty important one so you get the idea I have a beautiful mini scope I love it uh, thanks for watching see you in the next episode